G'day folks. Today I just want to talk to you quickly about Murray Cod spawning. It's the middle of October, there's water everywhere and the Murray Cod are going to be spawning like mad and I just think that we're going to see some of our best natural Murray Cod recruitment for many years this year. Now, Murray Cod, in the winter, the big female Murray Cod, they grow their eggs inside their stomach like a pregnant lady. So during the winter months, those Murray Cod, they go out, they feed like no tomorrow, they put on weight, they put on condition, they feed all them eggs and they become aggressive. And that's why we see so many people catching these larger Murray Cod in the winter months. In spring, what happens is the Murray Cod will swim upstream to spawn. The reason being, and I'll go into this a bit more in detail in a, in a few moments, but the reason being, they'll swim up, they'll drop their eggs, the eggs will float back down, feeding off their yolk sac until they're big enough to feed by themselves, and by that stage, they should have floated back down to where they started. So how does it all work? Let's get into a bit more detail. Right, so as I stated, during the winter months, the Murray Cod will feed a lot and put on a lot of weight and, and fatten up them eggs and grow the eggs inside her. In the spring, they'll swim upstream and they, they'll migrate upstream and that migration is triggered by a few things. It's triggered by daylight hours. It's triggered by water temperature and it's triggered by increased flood waters or increased flows during spring or a spring flood pretty much as we've got now. So what happens is the Murray Cod swim upstream the males look for a female and they pair up, similar to what trout do. And what they then do is they'll swim around and look for a suitable spot to create a nest, what's called a nest. Now when they find a spot, they might find a hollow log, they may find an undercut clay bank, they might even find a big couple of big rocks and hide in amongst the rocks out of the current. But the female will go in there, use her fins and clean the surface, and we'll call that the slate. We'll say they like to call it a clean slate, just for the purpose of this video. She'll create a clean slate with her fins. Then they'll sit there until conditions are optimal. Then the female, when she's ready, she will drop the eggs onto that clean slate, whether it's in a log, under the rocks, under a clay bank or whatever. Those eggs are very sticky and tacky and they will stick to that clean slate. And then the female cod's job is done. She will swim back downstream almost to the exact same log that she started from before she started spawning. Now, the male Murray Cod will then move over the eggs. He will squirt sperm all over them eggs and fertilise them and make them fertile, ready to hatch, and then he'll guard them. He will swim over them with his fins like this, brushing any algae and slime or anything off them that may form and choke the eggs. He will just hover around the nest and he will chase away predators because those Murray Cod eggs are in hot demand. Every, just about every fish species in the river wants them. The crayfish and yabbies will even eat them. So will the redfin, the trout, the yellow belly, the Macquarie perch, the everything, the little Murray Cod, the trout cod. Anything that can get their hands on them eggs will eat them eggs. But they're not going to go near them eggs while there's a Murray Cod. You know, a metre long guarding them. So he stays there and he guards them nests for a week or so or two or whatever it takes until they hatch. Now, if you cast a lure near that nest at that time, that big male is going to see that as a threat. He's going to come out and go whack and you're going to catch him. And that's why it's easy to catch Murray cod now during the closed cod season because they are, they're not aggressive, they're vulnerable. They are, they've got their guard down. They are just doing everything they can to protect their eggs and they will hit your lure in a heartbeat. But what happens when you catch that fish, you might think it's okay, I'm only practicing catch and release during the closed cod season. But when you unhook that fish and put him back in the water, he will quite often and most likely go straight past the nest, swim straight back downstream to where he started, just like the female did earlier, and sit under his log and abandon that nest and leave that nest open and, and prone to those eggs getting eaten, which they most likely will. So while you've practiced catch and release, and in your mind, you may have think you've done the right thing. You might have done the right thing by one cod, but you've probably killed off the potential for hundreds of natural recruiting Murray cod stocking. So I strongly, well, strongly recommend that you think twice before casting lures into rivers during the closed cod season. The female, if you hook her when she's up over the nest before she lays her eggs early in the spring, she will quite often, the stress and the trauma from being hooked will cause her to swim back downstream, sit under the log there she came from and reabsorb those eggs, 
then the male will probably swim back down as well, I guess, and they won't spawn at all. So if you catch the cod before they spawn, in the springtime, you'll kill off the, the potential for them to spawn. If you catch them while they're over the nest, they'll abandon the nest. So while you think you're doing the right thing and releasing the fish, you're actually in committing environmental vandalism, pretty much, by killing off the potential for hundreds of fish to spawn. Now, what happens... Say the male, the female's downstream, the male's over the eggs, the eggs hatch. The male's done a great job, the eggs hatch, he can then swim back downstream and they're on their own. What they will do, they will float back downstream to roughly the same area where the male and female, the parents, initially came up from. In those few days or weeks that it takes for them to float down, they will feed almost solely off the yolk sac, off their, the eggs that they came out of. They'll eat the rest of their eggs and by the time they're finished eating that, they will be big enough to feed for themselves on little macro invertebrates and tiny microorganisms and zooplankton and things that we can't see. So the first few days or weeks, I'll feed on the yolk sac, then they'll feed on the macro invertebrates and the, the zooplankton and the microorganisms and stuff until they're big enough to start eating shrimps and yabbies and worms and stuff. But those, that food source that they eat after they finish feeding off the, the yolk sac is imperative to the survival rate of the Murray cod spawning. Now, that is only really found in high, dirty flood water, where lots of green foliage has been flooded and riverbanks have been flooded and washed in and, and stuff like that. So right now, there's a major flood pushing down the Murray River. That's just fantastic. Any cod spawning down there now will be able to eat the tiny little plankton that we can't see. And the Ovens River is the same, so too is the Broken, the Lodden and the Camp Haspie, and the Goulburn's quite high as well. So this rain and these, these floods that we're getting now is fantastic. In lakes, a similar thing will happen. The male and female will pair up, like Lake Yildon, for example. The female will drop the eggs, the male will guard them, they'll hatch, they'll feed off their yolk sac, but then there's nothing left. There's no flood water washing in. They might be in the far upper reaches of the big lakes, but without those microorganisms and stuff, most of those fish that have just hatched will die. And that's why lakes like Lake Eildon and Lake Epilock, up in New South Wales, you've got Copeton. That's why these bigger lakes that are stocked with Murray cod rely solely on fish stocking to sustain their population because they don't breed naturally, or if they do, it's very, very, very low survival rate of the fry. For this reason, and, and the reason that I stated about the fishing nests, I highly recommend that people fishing in rivers where cod can breed, avoid using lures. Don't think it's okay to go and chase a Murray cod because you're only gonna practice catch and release anyway. That's, that's gonna do a lot of damage. Avoid chasing, try and avoid catching cod at all costs in rivers. At the moment, Victorian fisheries have come on board and open Lake Eildon during the spring months, which I think is fantastic. Go and make the most of it. Go up there and catch a cod because you're not doing much damage to the environment. I would like to see fisheries put a ban on lures in rivers during spring and to compensate that open Lake Epilock, uh, Cancurran Reservoir, even Lake Buffalo, which now gets stocked with Murray cod every year. I'd like to see these lakes open year round to Murray cod fishing while the rivers have a ban on lure fishing so that you can only use bait. I fish the Ovens River a lot in the spring and as soon as the water goes down now I'll be fishing it again but I'll be bait fishing with worms and I might catch a few carp. Fisheries Victoria have just committed to stocking 50,000 golden perch into the Ovens River in Wangaratta which is just music to my ears and everybody else in town. <laughs> in the next few years we might get a few yellow belly but I won't even target them with a lure until December because I don't want to catch a Murray cod. Using worms for bait just on a bank or a little shrimp you may still catch a cod. Usually it's got to be two to three kilos before they're big enough or 50 to 55 centimetres before they're big enough to spawn. And the majority of the cod that I catch on worms in the spring are only little baby ones. So I don't catch very many. I have, I'm not going to lie, I did I caught a 70 centimetre a couple of years ago and I was disappointed. But I also seek comfort in the knowledge that I've caught one spawning cod just by fishing with worms in the Ovens River in about the last 10 years. Had I floated down in my kayak casting lures, I would have done a lot of damage to the system. So there we go, folks. Make the most of Lake Yildon during the spring because the cod can still be very aggressive and you're not going to do any damage to the environment when you catch them. Hopefully Victorian fisheries will one day open other lakes to Murray cod fishing because I think Lake Yildon has been very successful this year and hopefully one day they'll, they'll ban lure fishing in the rivers in the springtime but I don't know whether that's going to happen anytime soon. But for now, I'm just waiting for the floodwaters to go down. I'm going to go out in the ovens and drown some worms and buy my time until December comes and I just can't wait to go cod fishing again.
So check out the Native Fish Australia website because that's where I've got a lot of this information. Try and avoid catching cod in rivers until December and make the most of the lakes that are open for cod fishing, which at the moment is just Lake Yeldon. Thank you for watching.